Hello everybody, it's my great pleasure to introduce you to Floyd Keys Deluxe version 2. This is the greatest Pink Floyd sound pack in the world. There are simply too many sounds to show, so I'm going to record separate videos. One for Dark Side of the Moon, one for Wish You Were Here, one for Animals, one for The Wall, one for the early years and one for later years. There's also going to be a seventh video regarding questions, uh, frequently asked questions and everything else I can remember that needs to be answered, okay? So if you have any questions, probably most of the answers are going to be on that seventh video. In this first video, I'm just going to show the sounds of the dark side of the moon, okay? Now, first of all, what am I using here? This is an Arturia Keylab 61 Mark II. This is a MIDI controller. This is a Roland Phantom 06, but it's only being used as a MIDI controller. I am not playing any Roland sounds at the moment, okay? All of the sounds that you're about to hear were created using the Arturia V Collection X VSTs. These are virtual instruments, okay? I am currently running main stage because this is my DAW of choice nowadays. I used Ableton Live for a long time, but nowadays I am preferring main stage. I believe it looks great, it works great, I don't have any problems with it, okay? Now, you don't need to buy the full V Collection license in order to be able to play Floyd Keys Deluxe version 2, okay? There is absolutely no barrier to entry. If you make a purchase, you get Floyd Keys Deluxe version 2. All you need to do is download Analog Lab, which is the central Arturia software. It has a free version, and the free version is enough to be able to import and play all of these sounds, okay? So again, no barrier to entry. You can download Floyd Keys Deluxe, and import it into Analog Lab and play these sounds. Now, additionally, I have one main stage concert for each of these videos that I told you. Dark Side, which were here, Animals, The Wall, Early Years and Later Years. But not everybody is a Mac user, not everybody is a main stage fan. So if you're interested in the main stage concerts, you can buy them along with Floyd Kiss Deluxe. All you have to do is select the additional main stage concerts when you're making your purchase, okay? Now, without further ado, let's get started. Dark Side of the Moon has Speak to Me, Breathe, On the Run, Time, Great Gig, Money, Us and Them, Any Color, Brain Damage, and Eclipse. The first song, Speak to Me, nobody plays anything here. This is just a sample that you have to trigger, and I have it here on my low C note. You can hear the heartbeats. We don't need to listen to the whole thing because you know what it sounds like. In this case, I'm using the main stage quick sampler, but you can use any sample manager that you prefer, okay? Now, quick legal disclaimer. Floyd Keys Deluxe version two is a collection of sounds I made using Arturia VSTs. These samples, such as Speak To Me, these are all the property of Pink Floyd, okay? I don't have any rights to any of Pink Floyd's music and I don't have any business affiliation with Pink Floyd whatsoever, okay? You can download all of these samples for free using the link that is in the description below. Many people do this, they share Pink Floyd samples because there are many Pink Floyd tribute bands in the world. And my intent here is just to help people with the initial setup. So you can download the samples for free even without buying Floyd Kiss Deluxe version 2 using the link that is in the description below. So I am not selling any of Pink Floyd's content. I am selling a sound pack, which is software, uh, instructions, presets for virtual instruments, okay? So for Speak To Me, we have the sample. For Breathe, we have the electric piano and the Hammond sound. So this is a Fender Rhodes sound that you hear right after the screams. This is the Stage 73 version 2 by Arturia. And then later on we have the Hammond organ sound. This is B3 version 2. Right, those are the true sounds that you need for a breathe. 
I'm not going to play the full song, I'm not going to play the full parts because I don't want the video to be too long, okay? So moving on to On The Run. We have three elements here. First of all, the sequence. And then we also have a Moog bass and an additional sample. Now, this sample was isolated from the original song. I don't know by who. I didn't do it myself, but I found it available on the internet. In this case, I'm using the quick sampler as well. And you can see the whole sample here. It lasts throughout the full duration of the song. On the Run is a song that was overdubbed up the wazoo. There were simply too many sounds, too many little sounds uh, on the song, and nobody plays each of the sounds separately. So you should focus on the sequence, tweaking the cutoff in the sequence, and you can leave all of these additional sounds playing in the background, which is this sample right here, okay? So yeah, a sample, the sequence, and the Moog bass. This sample, I should say, I didn't create myself. I can recreate it myself, but there is no need to. Why? This is the Arturia Synthy V, the Arturia recreation of the VCS, and the default preset is called On The Run and is exactly this that you're hearing. So you already have the sound. All you have to do is download Analog Lab and you have access to the sound, okay? On The Run. I'm not selling this. This isn't included in Floyd Keys Deluxe version 2. I'm just showing you that you should use the sound, okay? But it's not included in the sound pack. This sound is a default preset of Arturia Synthy V. Yeah, so that's it for On The Run. Now moving on to Time. So I have two patches here, one for Time Intro and one for the verses and for the rest of the song. So first of all, the sample, the clocks, right? Um, this is a little bit uh, pulled forward. I skipped a little bit here just to show you, but you know how it is, right? You trigger it clocks and then all the tingling of the clocks and this I manipulated I extracted the original sample from the song and then I found this uh, ticking loop which wasn't very long and then I looped it more and more times so that I have the right uh, timing here for the sound okay you can just trigger the sample and it lasts throughout the whole introduction Roger Waters recorded this on his bass, but I recommend that even if your bass player does play the tuk 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 tuk, you leave this on because it's more quantized and it's sort of a guide for your bass player. And it sounds a little bit more powerful, let's say, than the bass sound. So you have this in the background. And then we get these sounds here. This is a mini Moog sound, Moog bass. And as far as I'm aware, as far as I know, there weren't any mini Moog sounds on the dark side of the moon. I just read about it yesterday. Uh, Rick apparently was only using the VCS and maybe some other synth, but he didn't use any mini Moogs. I made the sound using the mini Moog because I'm very used to it. I like the sound of the mini Moog. But if anybody is interested, I can recreate the sound on the VCS. It doesn't really matter that much. But anyway, Moog bass sound, electric piano sound. And then here we have the Farfisa sound. This Farfisa sound went through a Leslie speaker for the recording of the record. And in this case, I'm using Farfisa V by Arturia going through the main stage rotor. So this is, this is called Rotor Cabinet. And it's the main stage emulation of a Leslie speaker. It sounds great. But there's also an Arturia version. There's an uh, Arturia effect that you can add on Analog Lab. It's called Rotary Speaker. 
you can use either one. If you don't use main stage, you're gonna have to use the Arturia. Or maybe you own some other Leslie speaker plugin that you can add. Anyway, this is for a Fisa sound. This is what it sounds like without the Leslie. Okay, and this is what it sounds like with the rotor sound. Now I left two options. One is the Farfisa sound and one is a Mellotron sound. For Floyd Kislux version one, uh, you had only the Mellotron sound available. I believe it serves the song. It cuts through the mix nicely and it has the eerie sound of the Mellotron. I believe it fits perfectly, but on the record, it was actually a Farfisa sound. If you prefer the Mellotron, you can use a Mellotron. It's also going through a Leslie cabinet. But yeah, Mellotron or Farfisa options. Also two options for the electric pianos because this is a Fender Road sound. And you also have a Wurlitzer option here if you, if you want. Uh, if I open Wurlitzer V3 here by Arturia, this is a great addition that Arturia made. For Floyd Keys Lux, I didn't use the Wurlitzer V2 because it didn't sound nearly as good as V3. And this is called Time Wurlitzer Pulse because it sounds really close to the Pulse version of the sound. And if I show you the effects here, we have a compressor, a flanger, EQ, and a Leslie speaker. So this is a Wurlitzer sound going through a Leslie. I don't think it's as wet as in Pulse, but it's certainly on the way there. Maybe you can crank up the depth here, maybe you can crank up the Leslie, but I don't wanna make it sound, uh, I don't want it to sound exaggeratedly wet. So yeah, Wurlitzer sound. Those are the options that you have for the intro of time. Then for the rest of the song, Moog bass, Wurlitzer, but it's a little different Wurlitzer sound, and then Farfisa and Mellotron options on top. This is the same Farfisa sound that you heard before. And here is the Mellotron sound, which is the same Mellotron sound you heard before. Now, if I were to play time live again, I would probably use the Mellotron sound because it's a little sharper. It cuts through the mix a little bit more. This sounds closer to the record. But sometimes sounds that sound perfect by themselves, once you put them within the context of a band mix, you can't hear them anymore. They are buried in the mix. I, th I believe the Mellotron sound cuts better through the mix, but it's up to you to use the Mellotron or the Farfiz, okay? Let me just show you the sound of the Wurlitzer without the Leslie.
right, so that's it for time. Now moving on to great gig, just the transition is. You know this part, you know the song, right? If you didn't learn Great Gig in the Sky yet, I made a tutorial on how to play the song, make sure to check it out. But you need a piano sound and a Hammond organ sound. Those are the only two sounds that you need. You can have both sounds separately on two different keyboards as I have them right here, right now. But you can also have them layered and then you move to another patch that has layered sound, you understand? One patch with just the piano and then another patch with the piano and the Hammond on top. This can be better for you to trigger the spin of the Leslie because if you're gonna be playing like this, have to let go of the keyboard and use your left hand to trigger the spinning of the Leslie so it may be better having both sounds stacked. Now there's one additional sample for this song which is the I'm not frightened of dying it's over here. And I am not frightened of dying any time right. will do I don't mind. Why should I be frightened of dying? There's you no know, reason for it you gotta go sometime. So that's it for great gig, just piano, Hammond and the sample. Now moving on to money. For money we have a few different samples and the main sound is the Wah Wurlitzer sound. In this case, I'm using the mud wheel to trigger the wah, but you can also reassign this to be used by a pedal. I believe it's better like that. Uh, the wah wah was a pedal and not a mud wheel. But because I believe most keyboardists don't use expression pedals, I left the, the wah assigned to the mud wheel, okay? <laughs> Now the samples that we have, I'm using them here on the sampler. This is different than the quick sampler, the main stage. If I go to mapping here, OVs and zone. You can see that we have three different samples. The first one is money intro stereo loop. It sounds like this. And it lasts for a long time because that's what it should sound like for a long time during the beginning of the song. And then once your drummer hits the, the snare and the rest of the band comes in, you can turn it off. I'm using a panic button here. And then later on, you have the sounds again, but I have this different sample called just money single effects, which is just one cycle. I've seen people using each of these sounds separately on pads that they would trigger one at a time. That's not what I would do, but <laughs> anyway, you can do it if you want. You just have to crop the sample and reorganize it. And the third sample is the I was in the right. Yeah. <laughs> I was in the right. Yes, absolutely in the right. I certainly was in the right. Yeah, I was definitely in the right. That geezer was cruising for a bruising. Wow, wow, wow. 
I would also recommend that you have one sound that is just the Wurlitzer without the Wah and then another one with the Wah so that you have the different sounds. First you hear just the, the Wurlitzer sound and then you start hearing the Wah a little bit forward in the song. Now I also have two different sounds on top here, a Moog and a Prophet sound and these aren't actually in the record. Back when I played with the Floyd Tribute Band, we were a four-man band. We didn't have a sax player. So the burden of all sax solos fell onto me, the keyboardist, right? So you can use any synth leads that you want. I made one for the Prophet 5, which is more psychedelic, more exaggerated, and one for the Moog, which is uh, brassier. It's more tamed, let's say. So this is just an alternative if you don't have a sax player, okay? <laughs> I think it has too much reverb, listening back to it right now. You can use it if you want or you can choose any other leads that you like let me just show you the profit lead warning it is more exaggerated yes it is <laughs> Anyway, for money, you only need the samples and if you want, you can use these sounds. Moving on, we have us and them. Now the transition is very smooth. Ideally, to play the transition between money and us and them, you should use an expression pedal to fade in the chord because you're definitely going to be using your two hands to play this chord. <laughs> Okay, it's the same Hammond organ sound for the whole song, but later on the more energetic parts we have. For the piano solo, you're going to use the same patch here. Just make sure not to forget the... I mean, they're going to kill you. So, like, if you give them a quick sh short, sharp shock, and they do it again, dig it. I mean, he got a fly, because I could have given him a flash in like that. In this case, I have the sample on the right here, but it's the short, sharp shock. I mean, they're gonna kill ya. So, like, if you give them a quick sh short, sharp shock, they don't do it again. All of these samples may require a little bit of reverb. I don't know if you're gonna add more reverb to them. You may want to do that. I don't have many reverbs. I don't have too much reverb on. All of these sounds because I feel like reverb is a more personal choice. Reverbs and pianos are more of a personal choice. Some people like cranked reverbs, some people like more tamed reverbs. So I try to leave uh, a, as minimal reverb as possible on the sounds, okay? For this sample, I would definitely put some reverb. 
but in this case, it's just the raw sample, okay? Now, moving on to any color you like. Here we have the Hammond and the Moog lead. Now, my impression hearing this lead using headphones, I'm just using headphones to record, is that it's too bright. I can hear a lot of the high frequencies. On my headphones, I think it's too bright. But if I take off my headphones and put the sounds through this amp here, it's going to sound perfect. This is something that I'm going to say again probably many times throughout these videos, but Floyd Kizilux version 1 I made exclusively using AKG headphones, okay? Now version 2, I used transitioning between headphones and Roland KC350. This is a keyboard amp and at least to me, it's a more reliable source of what the sound is going to sound like. Why? I want Floyd Kizilux to be the golden standard when it comes to Pink Floyd sound packs and it's optimized for live performance. You don't do live performance for headphones. You do live performance for actual stages to play in front of people. So this is a more trustworthy source when it comes to live performance rather than headphones, okay? Now, sounds that sound perfect by themselves may disappear within the context of a mix. And sounds that are too bright on headphones may be just perfect once you put them within the context of a mix, okay? So the sounds as they are, they are optimized for live performance, okay? I hope you understand that. Now, one additional thing for any call you like, later on in the song we have a uh, Moog bass. I mean, not me, a Moog, maybe a VCS, but you have a bass sound and you can have it on the left of your keyboard. In this case, I have it on this D right here. And this is my tip for you. If you're playing the song, you should have it here so that you can play the bass with your thumb as well. So you're going... Those are the sounds for any color you like. You have options of the Mini Moog, one with the delay, one without the delay, and there are different versions. One has more detune, one has less detune, because this is also a personal choice. Some people prefer really detuned sounds. I am not so much of a heavy detune guy. I prefer more tamed, tuned oscillators. Not perfectly tuned, but just slightly detuned. And you have those different options, okay? So brain damage and eclipse. Hammond on the bottom, Moog's on the top. The Hammond sounds like this. <laughs> okay. No 
dark side in the moon really matter of fact it's all dark okay so Hammond Oregon um, hearing this I just got the feeling that it's too mid it doesn't have enough low end there are always those dudes that say oh this sound like trash it sounds too digital whatever this is yet another case of if you think it doesn't have enough low end if you think it's too mid try putting this within the context of a mix trust me on this this Hammond sound even myself I I'm hearing this playing it by itself playing by itself it feels like it doesn't have enough low end it feels like it's too mid but if you're gonna play with a band you have a bass player you have a drummer you don't need to play the heavy load of the low end you should stick to the mid frequencies and this sounds perfectly cuts perfectly through the mix uh, as it is okay now I have just a few things to talk about uh, regarding the Hammond organ sounds of Floyd Keys Lux version 2 if I open here the V3 version 2 you can take a look inside and I want to talk about the Leslie spin going into effects here you can see rotary speaker 122 close and you can see that we have this stereo knob here it's currently at 0% this means that the spinning of the Leslie is 100% mono I don't know if you're listening with headphones if you're listening with a keyboard amp if you're listening through stereo monitors a PA system but when we're talking about stereo you should have left and right okay this is what the spin of the Leslie sounds like being mono now let me crank the stereo here 100% stereo 100% stereo now let me lower to around 50% here so when you increase the stereo of the Leslie spin you hear the sound being thrown from left to right in most cases we're led to believe that stereo sounds are better than mono but not necessarily okay most people play keyboards and they don't use stereo they play mono if you use stereo it may be interesting to raise the stereo uh, knob of all your Hammond sounds because you can sort of hear the sound going from left to right if you're using headphones it's very clear the difference if you are using stereo monitors it's very clear the difference if you're watching a Pink Floyd tribute band and the keyboardist has a stereo Leslie or he doesn't have a stereo Leslie 99% of people are not going to be able to tell the difference uh, they are not noticing these sorts of details but yes it may be interesting to play stereo but if you're gonna play mono you should definitely set all of your sounds to mono otherwise they may sound like garbage why do I say this I have been using headphones and this amp for a long time when I make the sounds stereo like 50 60 percent on b3v and I'm using one amp which is a mono source is just one source of sound I think it's not I think I can notice I can tell that the Leslie is not as prominent the spinning sound is not as prominent because it's trying to uh, throw the sound from left to right if it's just a mono sound if it's just a mono source it's always better to have the Hammond sounds 100% mono okay so because Floyd Kiss Lux is a product made for all people who want to play Pink Floyd I purposely consciously left all Hammond organ sounds with the Leslie spinning mono okay this sounds better to me through amps but if you want to make them stereo uh, you can uh, I'm curious about this in case any of you is interested in a, a separate sound pack where I have all of the Hammond sounds with their stereo I can do this for people who won't fly his looks I can create an additional a copy of all of the Hammond sounds but they are stereo let me know if you're interested in this I can do it but the way that it is in Floyd Keys Deluxe version 2 is all Leslie uh, spinnings of the Hammond organ sounds are mono okay so yes the last thing about the dark side of the moon is 
the modes that you just heard have auto pan. This is really good if you're playing stereo because the Moog sounds are dancing from left to right. If you have a major Pink Floyd tribute band and you're gonna play on a stage for 500 people with stereo PAs, this is wonderful because people can really hear the buzzing sounds of the Moogs going from left to right. But this is an analog lab split. If I open it here, you're gonna see that I have left and right, the two Moogs, and they're both being routed into uh, independent stereo pan effects, okay? That's why they're not going from left to right together. You can sort of hear them crossing and this is a lot better, okay? This is the analog lab stereo pan effect. If you don't like the penny of the sound, you can resort to just uh, using pan, not auto pan, just a regular pan, just like I have here. So this is the two Moog sounds, but this one is a little bit panned to the right. And this one is a little bit panned to the left. You may want to crank the pannings a little bit. This is almost all the way left and right. my opinion they sound a little bit better when you have them somewhat overlapping not one 100% right and the other one 100% left I would prefer having some overlap like this <laughs> My personal choice would be the auto pan choice, okay, using the analog lab split. So yeah, that's it for the dark side of the moon. I believe all sounds are covered. If you are missing any sounds, let me know. Uh, it's my mission to leave Floyd Kizilux as the biggest, baddest Pink Floyd sound pack ever. So in case you feel like I am missing this or that sound, let me know, okay. <laughs>